Welcome to Site Tech Intermountain training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a project in Trimble Works Manager. Just the basics of uh, creating a job site, bringing in files that have already been created from a data collector, and creating the geofence area. So to get started um, from the Works Manager main screen here where it shows projects, you go ahead and up here on the top right, there's a Create button. So here we go to Create, and it's a step one of three. Right off the bat, you got to pick the account you have. I have quite a few other accounts in here, but you would pick the one for the name that's your company. And right here, you get to name it. Now make sure that you name this something that's going to be the overall for the project. It's going to be the, the project name that stays with it the entire time. We'll just call this the uh, Site Tech Demo, and I'll put the date, 8-9-2023. So once we're done, we got the account, project name, hit next. Now in here, you can go ahead and enter in any of this information now. If you don't do it right now, it's not the end of the world. We can add it in later on in the settings, but it's good to just go ahead and fresh while you're setting the site up, bring in any information that you do have. So in this instance, the job site already has designs and it has a calibration for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and right here where it says the either the DC or .cal, I'm going to hit plus and then I have a local site calibration that I'm going to use so I'm going to hit that and then it's a game of navigating to it so right here I have the dot cal for my project I'm going to go ahead and hit open and bring that in um, I don't you I'm not using a geoid here so I'm going to run control points I do have the control points from the data collector I do like to bring those in just so I can see it on the project if I had avoidance zones or a feature code or an XML, um, go ahead and bring that all in. If not, there again, like I said, you can bring it in later on if you don't right here. So that's step two. So we go ahead and hit next. Now the next one is going to ask us where is the project at? There's a couple different ways you can do it. One, you can enter it here on the left side and actually key in an address and bring it down to you. Or if you just know exactly where it's at, you can go ahead and just click on or basically scroll in until you find it. The project that I'm actually using today is here at our site tech training or site tech building here in uh, West Valley. So the project boundary that I want to set is around this parking lot right here. Here's where the actual design is. But what I've learned with drawing the boundary here is to be generous with it. Go ahead and make it, you know, quite a bit larger than your project. Not well, not way farther out than you need to be, but you just don't need to actually be going right along the edge of where you know it is. Just be a little bit more generous with it. So you do have the option here on the right side to import a boundary if you have that. But in this instance, I'm going to show you how to draw the boundary. So this option right here for draw boundary, just go ahead and click on it. And then it's a matter of just clicking all the way around. And I'll show you how to auto close it. So I'm going to go ahead and come out here to the freeway. And I'll come down below this building um, and basically just put a square around. It doesn't have to be a square or a, a perfect, you know, boundary. It can be kind of all over the place um, in, in the shape is what I mean. But once I've hit that last one, I don't have to return back to here. I can hit OK. So now that I am done with that, I can hit Finish. And it will go ahead and create the project itself. Now, now that that project is set up, you can zoom out and see that our, our geofenced area boundary is around it. So at the top here, got the name of the project, Site Tech Demo. There's no devices added to it yet or designs. The next thing I want to do is on this left ribbon over here, this is the map option under designs. I'm going to go ahead and add a design that I have. Currently none in here, so you can either create a design here or add. I'll just go ahead and hit create design. Now you have two different options here. What are you sending it to? Are you sending it to a machine or a data collector? Or if you're doing both, you kind of just need to create both. Um, but in this app instance, I'm going to do a data collector. We'll just call this the uh, site tech finish grade and we'll put the date. I always like to put the date for designs. Now here I can pick from the different types of file types that I have between TTM, DXF, um, I can send stakeout points to the data collector, um, a PRO, whatever you have, go ahead and just go ahead and fill this out. So at this point, I'm going to bring in my .ttm, which is my surface, and then I am going to add a DXF for my line work. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I've got a couple in here for that same project. I've got some storm drain, but I'm going to just bring in my uh, northeast finish grade option. 
and I don't have any stakeout points, so I'm going to just leave it as is. Now, I don't have any devices la added in here yet. It would give me an option to publish two devices, but I'm not, or I don't have the, them added to the project yet, so we'll just hit publish to create the design in the works manager. So now for this project, I've got an actual design, version one, the date that it was modified and by who. So the next thing I wanna do is come down here to devices and actually pick devices, um, meaning machines or data collectors or bases, whatever you want this to go to. Um, I'm gonna add a device and in my list right here, I'm gonna pick the ones that I want it to go to. In another video, I will show you how to add the devices into your account. But right now, this TSC7, my data collector out in the field, I want to go ahead and check that one. And then I also am going to check this one, which is my computer right here that runs the emulator. So I'm adding those two devices to this project. So now that I have two devices added in here, I can go ahead and go back to designs and just verify. I can click on this option right here. And over here, it'll give me the ability to either archive, edit this design, delete it, download. But you'll see right here where it says publishing to devices. Um, it's just an option that now the devices are going to be added to it. So in here, if you're not sure if it is, you can go to publish to devices and just make sure that they're added in here. So now you can see that those two are in here. We're good to go. So we can close out. So at this point, You'll notice that from the map, we've got our boundary set. That's how you make the project, name the project. We've got a design that we can add designs at any time we need to in here just by simply adding right there. Um, members allows you to add people to the project as either project manager or just viewers. So for example, here you can hit add. So you can drop this down and make them a project manager or just a viewer, which gives them different options if, if they're brought in here. You would enter their email if it's a new person or if it's someone that's already been part of your account, you can simply just add them at this point right here. So that's how you add in the uh, members. And then once again, under devices, you'll see the current devices. One more thing I wanted to show you on this video is under the settings tab right here. This comes back to some of the settings that we had originally brought in for the project in the setup. It's not the end of the world if we needed to add a geoid or add avoidance zones or add FXL files, et cetera, et cetera here. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is your boundary. If you felt like the boundary was not set right the first time you did it, you don't need to completely close out the project and, and delete it and start a new one. You can hit this uh, edit button right here and actually edit that boundary if you feel like it's not right. So that's how you create a project in Works Manager. In other videos, I will show you how to manage the devices by adding them, um, meaning bringing them into your project and adding them into your account. And I'll also show you how to um, do device, excuse me, uh, create designs and manage the devices um, from Trimble Business Center. So thank you for watching this video from SiteTech Intermountain on Trimble Works Manager, creating a job site.